this one is for you. If I said that division, well, let's talk about the new look Steelers here. They go from Justin Fields to Russell Wilson. This is why Mike Tomlin is going to have a gold jacket someday because the whole world said he's crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy. We and are. then as it turned out Sunday night, Sorry, not crazy. Yep. What is the biggest difference in what you saw from their offense yeah. when Russell was out there versus Justin? Air. The trajectory of the throws. I want everyone to pay attention to how long the ball is in the air. Justin to Russell. This is Justin. Bottom of the screen. Go out to George Pickens. Watch the trajectory, but pay attention to how long the ball is in the air from the quarterback's hand receiver. 1.8 seconds, okay? That's a go route. Incomplete. Now it's a tight end down what we call like a seam, okay? How long is the ball in the air from Justin Fields when he kind of drives the football? 1.8, and then this one's 1.4. Now contrast that to Russell Wilson, and this is where I got to give him credit. Same route. Right, it's the go route to the bottom of the screen. 1.8 was Justin. That's how long the ball was in the air, okay? Pay attention to this. Okay, 3.0. So almost a second half longer for George Pickens to get the ball. This one's the Friar Muth. Again, on that little bit of a seam route. 1.4 for Justin. How long for Russell? From the ball leaving his hand. 2.1, almost another second longer. So just how much time those pass catchers had to adjust to the football, I got to give credit. That was the main difference performance-wise, Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear I'm smiling on what right he's now. saying. What's that? I'm smiling right now because as a former wide receiver, now I can adjust to the football in air. When the ball is on a flat line trajectory, I don't have time to adjust to a football when it's coming up on me. Yeah. When you have enough air under that football, now I can adjust. more concerned how much longer your pants have before they split <laughs> down there crotched <laughs> looking at the film. We're right good. There. We're good. We're that, 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 fair enough. But, but let me ask you this. Um, I think a lot of fans will hear that and they will think having zip on the ball, getting it there before the defender can react, before the defense can adjust and all that kind of stuff is preferable. So explain, and I think you did a pretty good job at the beginning of it, you're talking about throwing those contested balls, you're talking Correct. about throwing back shoulders, Correct. the those kinds of things receivers have to adjust to. Yeah, the one-on-one -on -one throws where it's my guy versus your guy, and the more time, now sometimes you got to drive it, but more time you give that talented receiver – or that talented tight end, the ability to use their body to create leverage, to go up and time that jump to go make the catch. And it's something that I didn't anticipate the change being impactful, but that was the main difference. And I think that is, for George Pickens, that matters a great deal. That, that's why they made the change, is to unlock George Pickens and mm. to make him a downfield weapon and to make the change before, and we said this on Sunday, yes. before they play a division game. That was the whole teeth on day against the Giants. They'll go into the bye week. They'll sit down. They'll reconvene. And they'll figure it out for them. That and to that point, I've been on the defensive side of a lot of those passes going against Russell Wilson when he was in Seattle. That much air on the ball creates panic within the DB mm -hmm. because now I'm running, I'm chasing, Good the point. ball's not there, and I start to panic. So not only are there going to be receptions deep down the field, but they're going to create more pass interference or holding calls because of the panic that comes on the DB. Some things never change. We, we continue to be underwhelmed and yet the Steelers are going to Tomlin their way all the way to 6-2. Like and that. Tomlining is a verb. And I'd say Quan Barkley all the way to point. And people, whatever the case is, and Sirianni, all the craziness with him and everything. Rex was on here on Monday, and he said the formula for the Eagles is what they did last week. That team needs to run it through Saquon and let everything else sort of come from that. And my response was, they have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and they pay their quarterback $50 million a year. I'm not 100% sure I'm seeing it the same way. What is the formula if this team is going to make it to the Super Bowl? It would be explosive runs because that's what they're doing well right now. And that's the only thing that I really hang your hat on offensively. I don't, I don't think this offense could go win a Super Bowl right now, okay? I, I really don't believe that. If you go back to last week, one, they started. And it's, 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 and it's, and it's telling. Is that because they don't want to do it because they think they can't do it? Why is it that he's not I, doing it? I don't know the answer to why he's not. That hasn't been an issue in the past, but it's an issue right now. Shefty, has the noise quieted down there? That obviously was a big win, and the Saquon going back against the mm -hmm. Giants thing was such a feel-good. I think it was the perfect antidote to all the craziness of the week before with Sirianni and the it's fans. two straight wins now, and I know the win against the Browns was not overly impressive, but they still have begun to stack them up together. Now they play the Bengals, and again, another one of those big games because both teams – Started slowly. Yep. Both teams have to have this kind of win. And there'll be a little bit of noise in the city that doesn't come through here. Yeah, we can put the picks up on the screen, actually. They had a kickoff return for a touchdown. They weren't blowing the doors off it. 
Philly's defense played a ton better last week. I, I know it was the New York Giants. Nicole Dean blitzing, coming up with sacks. Jalen Carter showing up for those guys in the last few weeks. I think they have a chance offensively. If you can run the football, have explosive runs, and then be able to throw the ball on the outside to A.J. Brown, it's not a ton. That's enough to win football games. Explosive plays are the hardest thing to defend mm. as a defense. Low-key, this is a critical game for the Bengals. Critical. They win this that game. Part. They get all the way back to 4-4 four and four playing Baltimore next week. They could find themselves yeah. through what was a terrible start. Yep. Back on Get Up Thursdays with Shefty. Let's run the hurry up. Bunch of quarterback news out there. Tua, go. A lot of people wondered whether we'd ever see Tua Tunga Bailoa play again. Well, he's back at practice yesterday, and he is tracking to play on Sunday. He still needs to clear through concussion protocol. But right now, it would be a surprise if he didn't, and it would be a surprise if he weren't out there on Sunday playing quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. Looks like Tua is on his way back. Now, Bryce Young, the Panthers quarterback, is going to be starting on Sunday. Nice, easy assignment in Denver against a tough Broncos defense. Mm -hmm. Andy Dalton was involved in a car accident on Tuesday. Hurt his right thumb, sprained thumb, they're saying right now. And with Andy Dalton hurt, oh. Bryce Young gets called on again. There might not be much of a tougher assignment than Jaden Daniels waiting to get word on whether he'll be able to make it back for Sunday's game against Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears. He did not play. Marcus Mariota would have to start in place of Jaden Daniels. And keep in mind, this is a game that the NFL flexed into the later slot for Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams, yeah. and they moved the Eagles-Bengals game to an earlier time slot, and now the Eagles-Bengals game <laughs> has got an awful lot of ramifications, and we might not have Jaden Daniels in the late afternoon flex That would slot. be a terrible shame. I mean, they're going from one number two overall pick to another number two overall pick, but boy, it doesn't hit the same with Marcus Mariota instead of Jaden Daniels. And you were telling me earlier this morning, Dan Quinn saying he's week to week, that that's sort of the new, what, what's that coach well, speak I, for? I, I say week to week is the new coach speak for unlikely to play this week. Mm. If they say Day to day, that means he's got a realistic <laughs> chance. Week to week, you're not counting on the guy yeah. playing that week. So this is I'm the Shefty Whisperer. This is how I get all the information <laughs> that we have out there. And Harry, like first and foremost, I, I speak for us all. This is the matchup we're all dying to see. Right? Yeah. We all yeah. want to see these two rookies yeah. going head to head. They're both playing so well. They're both so good. But the injury, the ribs. I mean, you you were telling me earlier this yeah. morning that's a bad injury. I was with Jay Mack in Tennessee when I had my first rib injury, and it was not. Pleasing at all. Everything I had to do, you talk about from breathing, moving around gingerly, uh, doing pool workouts because you can't do normal movements out on the football field or in the uh, training room or, or weight room. Uh, it's just difficult to come back from. It's very painful. Okay. So, so, look, we all hope that he can play, but not at the expense of the remainder of his yeah. season, which is obviously more important. And this Bears defense that he's playing against, J-Mac, you were telling us, is pretty good. Yes, whether he's out there or Mario, it's going to probably be the best defense they've seen so far yeah. this season. The Bears run that two-safety shell, but they attack. And that's the one thing you know they're coming at you. The commander's run game can hold them up, but this secondary, that was Kyler Gordon there, they come at you. Look at the way these guys are run to the football, and they have big guys up front with Javon Dexter, with Montez Sweat, that get after you. And in the back end, they attack the football, whether it's a big gain or not. They have guys that can cover across the board. Mm -hmm. Jalen Johnson, one of the best corners in the NFL to match up and shadow your best wide receiver. So they have a challenge coming up this week. Dan, how do you like that game? I mean, obviously, it's one thing if Jaden Daniels plays, it's another thing if he does not, at least in terms of how interesting I think it is to everybody else. But it's a big game for both these teams. The Bears are in this great division. The Commanders are leading theirs. How do you like the game? I like it when it comes to the Offensive Rookie of the Year. I think the Offensive Rookie of the Year race gets very tight after this weekend. Mm -hmm. Caleb Williams, last two weeks, 43 of 58, 530 yards, six touchdowns, 90 yards on the ground. We've all given it to Jaden. I love Jaden. This race is going to get tight. Also, without Jaden, I don't think Washington can win. Chicago's sitting five.